we greet you on this, the Sunday after Ascension Day, let's rise and sing our opening hymn, hymn 347.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Consider, O Lord, and hear me when I cry unto thee, Alleluia. Unto thee my heart hath said, Thy face, Lord, have I sought. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Is my light and my salvation. Who then shall I fear? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. And as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come on, sit here, O Lord, and hear me when I cry to be Alleluia. our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. <laughs> Here beginneth the fifth verse of the 33rd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. 
here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 24, found on page 368 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 24 on page 368 of the prayer book. The earth is the Lord's and all that therein is, the compass of the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall rise up in his holy place? Even he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and that hath not lift up his mind unto vanity, nor sworn to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, even of them that seek thy face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty, even the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Even the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the seventh verse. The end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, o Lord. Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. I think I got that wrong. Anyway, Gospel lessons on the next page. <laughs> When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. 
Praise be to Thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. Um, we had a, uh, a little... Uh, little surprise this morning, um, you all may miss most of that, um, except if you came to Sunday school, you wouldn't have. Um, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Uh, the uh, uh, students from the Geneva School in Orlando, which is uh, um, a, uh, a full-fledged school that's been around for years, and, and many of the people there go to our cathedral church, uh, St. Albans, down in Orlando. Um, we had 20 students in here for uh, Holy Communion this morning, and they were here on their senior trip, getting ready to uh, get ready to go out into the world, and, uh, and it was such a, such a blast, and we had a little... Uh, little reception for him this morning and everything and the uh, it was just it was it was nice you know it's just it was pretty wild i don't think we've ever had 60 people at the early service in this church <laughs> so uh anyway it was pretty it was it was something else so it was a it was a real blessing it was a whole lot of fun and i uh, just wanted to to share that with you and just let you know you missed it <laughs> so anyway <laughs> i know i'm an idiot but anyway <laughs> the uh usual things uh happening uh we finished up uh Bible study on Wednesday evening, and and because of the way the schedule is this summer, um, we're going to have to um, wait until August to pick back up on it, and uh, we don't want to uh, start and stop and start and stop and start and stop um, throughout. You know, we always take July off anyway, um, so uh, so no more Bible study until uh, beginning of uh, August, and but that doesn't mean the Tuesday book study slash Bible study, that's still going on. So those of you that are in that class, no worries, that one's still happening. And, uh, but because Wednesday night uh, Bible study is not happening, that means we won't have our dinners um, for the next little bit. And, uh, but we will still have Holy Communion every Wednesday evening. Uh, that's just, you know me, we're gonna do it, okay? So, uh, so please do make note of that. And uh, VBS is uh, ready. Uh, if you know, uh, you know, children, grandchildren, whatever, that uh, um, always like to come to VBS, uh, the, uh, go on the website and you can uh, register the children. And also um, the craft market um, 
registration. If you're a crafter or something like that, or you know crafters, uh, that registration is open and available also for the craft fair, which is in the fall. So all that sort of stuff, you know, it's it may be summertime and we're starting to get, you know, warm days finally, although the heater cut on at my house last night. I have no clue why that happened. That many got below 62 degrees in my house. That was just weird. Made me angry. It should be summertime. So anyway, um, so let's see. Two, two, two. Okay. Um, this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, as I've announced to you before, um, Steve Stackhouse, uh, Dave's son, passed away back on May 3rd, and his funeral will be at, um, what's the name of that chapel? The, uh, you should have it in your bullets in there in front of you. The Graham Chapel over at Montreat College. Um, so I encourage you, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, if you can all come out. Uh, I certainly will be there, and I know a few others will be, but uh, we would be uh, honored if you came and uh, gave your respects. And also, um, one of our uh, former members, Dennis uh, Huftaling, um, he moved to South Carolina to be near family um, about five years ago, and he passed away um, last Friday, May 12th. And we are going to have his funeral here on May 31st at 11 o'clock in the morning. So uh, please do put that on your calendar um, as we uh, support the family and, and we remember Dennis, who we remember very, very fondly. Um, he was part of the whole crew of uh, older gentlemen that were always here on Wednesday evenings and everything for class and everything and they're just absolutely fabulous man so uh, May 31st all right how about the blessing of birthdays and anniversaries anyone had one in the past week come on up birthday birthday prayer is found on page 597 in the prayer book if you'll turn to that let us kneel and pray this prayer together share a birthday with your mother-in-law? <laughs> Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, and raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, John. Thank you. Happy birthday, Karen. Our sermon hymn today is hymn 356.
On Thursday on the Ascension Day, we heard these words, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. The gospel lessons that we have heard over the course of the past three Sundays, the last three Sundays of the Easter season, they all come from the 16th chapter of St. John. And what these lessons do for us is they prepare us to see and to understand the meaning of our Lord's ascension, which we celebrated on Thursday and also remember today. All those lessons are about his departure and his return. We hear these words from him. He says, Now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. That's how Jesus spoke to his disciples. And as we well know, if you were here the Sunday we read that, you know they just didn't get it. What is this that he saith unto us, a little while ye shall not see me, and again a little while ye shall see me, but because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Confusion. I mean, it's, it's kind of silly when you hear it that put that way. I mean... Can you not almost just taste the bewilderment on their part? I mean, there's pain there, and there's just absolute incredible confusion in those words. We cannot tell what he said. They did not see how they could do without the presence of their master, teacher, and friend. How could his departure, as he said, be expedient for them? What could he possibly mean by sending to them another comforter? We cannot tell what he's at. And now we have his ascension. They're still bewildered. They're still confused. And they stand gazing up into heaven. I can just see the dumbfounded looks on their faces. You know, the old proverbial jaw hitting the floor like, wow. And then the angels appear and say to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gaze up in the heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, so, show, so in like manner, come back from heaven. Departure and return. But it wasn't until Pentecost that they began to actually understand the meaning of all these things. I mean, Jesus had promised them this. He said, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Only then would all these things, the experience and God's presence with them, begin to actually make sense. Only then could they truly be the witnesses Jesus wanted them to be, going out into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. So it was with the disciples, we cannot tell what he said. And so they just stood there, bewildered and confused, mouths hanging open, just looking up, to heaven. I mean, how about us? Do we know what he said? Departure and return. These two great festivals of the Christian year represent the most profound and at the same time the most elementary lessons of the Christian spiritual life. 
but can we even begin to grasp what they actually mean? Can we tell what he saith? Or must we stand gazing, bewildered and confused, gazing up into heaven, so to speak, looking towards some kind of spiritual reality, some home of the spirit, which can never be ours, and living our lives as though Ascension and Pentecost had never really happened for us. <coughs> so what does Ascension mean? Let's trot back to a little story that happened in the Easter Garden. Mary Magdalene is there, and our Lord appears to her, and she longs to run towards him and embrace him. And what does he say? Mary, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. The point is this. Those who follow him must be weaned from earthly hopes and earthly expectations. The earthly, the fleshly must be transformed, transfigured, so that we see its true reality as spiritual. In that sense, he must depart from us. And it's expedient then that he go away. Jesus tells us this in Gospel in John's Gospel, chapter six. He says, "The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life." In the pain, the travail, the confusion of earthly life, we must give birth to faith. A faith which knows God as spirit. And so he returns to us in the power of the spirit. And that, my friends, is Pentecost. Now, I know to speak of a spiritual life, of a life in the spirit, can really sound kind of obscure, maybe wishy-washy to some Christians. In fact, to many Christians. But if that's really so, then just what the heck is our religion all about then? Peter tells us today, he says, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We are risen with Christ. We are born anew of water and the Spirit. We seek those things which are above, the life of ascension and Pentecost being the fundamental reality of our life. We are to ascend with him in heart and mind and with him continually dwell. And that's not really, that's obscure. I mean, there is an absolutely fabulous picture of the spiritual life that has been set out for us today in today's epistle. And I think, although Paul read it very well, I think it's incumbent upon us to hear it again to see this is what the spiritual life is. The end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the, of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. There's your description of the spiritual life. The end of all things is at hand, he writes. In Ascension and Pentecost, the end of all things, the life of heaven, the meaning of all things, is indeed at hand. Therefore, be sober, it means be serious. Don't just stand there gazing up into heaven. The spiritual life of God's kingdom is yours, and it's here 
in our midst, within our grasp. In fact, it's within each and every one of us. Therefore, watch unto prayer. And above all, it says, have fervent charity among yourselves. For to do that is to live the spiritual life of heaven here on this earth. Fervent charity. Great oldie English kind of phrase. You know what that means? Passionate love of God. Passionate, as in passion of Christ. Passionate love of God. If we watch unto prayer and we exhibit and live the passionate love of God with one another, then we are truly living the spiritual life. And so then when we actually truly do, the, do that, then no one will look at us and ask us the question, hey, why are you standing gazing up into heaven? Because you won't be gazing, because you will be living. Living the spiritual life, watchful unto prayer, within the passionate love of Almighty God. Amen. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as the most justly due great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and at the ages of ages. Amen. Let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Let us pray.
Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest. We also offer in great thanksgiving for his glorious ascension back to the right hand of the throne of glory in heaven. Please pray this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place, for Allie and Child, Bill, Florence, Francis, Jeanette, Julie, Norm, and Randy. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling, remembering Alex, Cheryl, Carolyn, and Dale. And we also pray for the souls of the faith that departed who share with us in this Eucharist, remembering this week, Dennis. Finally, pre please pray this day in our provincial prayer, prayer cycle for St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Alto, Georgia, especially in their search for a new vicar. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by the Holy Apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of our true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Chandler, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace that to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is the true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, 
If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through thy most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection manifestly appeared to all his apostles and in their sight ascended up into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. From the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, and these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. 
Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance, blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in the heart with faith and thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
even now, having received the most precious body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy lasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abideth with his church on earth, even unto the end of the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.